Remember that saying, action cures fear. Get on with it. Don't look at it. I, I, um, I'm doing these knife paintings. I did two yesterday, one on Patreon and one on YouTube. Uh, uh, now, I'm on British Impressionists. It's a really nice, really good site. But somebody's leaving it, or possibly because they don't like the idea of Britishness might be exclusive to, to foreign people, people who weren't born in this country. And also that some of the paintings are not really Impressionist. But what is Impressionism? I think originally it was a, a term applied to, to those who go out uh, and paint in the, in the air, plein air, plein air, open air. And, of course, the Impressionists went out into the open air, largely, not entirely, because manufacturers of the paint found a way to put it in a tube with a, a screw-top lid, making it portable. So, uh, so there it is. Um, me, I don't do anything outdoors, and I'm a member of British Impressionists. My work I consider to be Impressionist in the sense that it's made up. It's made up from previous paintings, from my experience, from photographs that I've taken, but mostly from my own previous work. Now, here's one. Uh, this I did uh, not so long ago. It's a watercolour of Mitchell, Seven Islands, or it could be anywhere. It's just a painting. And I'm going to just do something based on that. So I'm going to put that down here on my whoops on my easel so that I can refer to it as and when. Now a bit of MDF, two millimeter thick, I just to clamp it a bit, otherwise it will flatter. And that we don't want. Now uh, so it's two millimeter MDF, ten inches by uh, eight inches, quite small, but it has to be quite small because I I can't go too far away with the webcam. So what I've done, I've changed the, the tripod. I've got the boom at an angle so that I can encompass this and my palette, which is quite near to me. I'm trying to get it even closer, but the closer I get it. The, the less you see of it uh, so I think that's quite good so what we've got is cadmium yellow cadmium yellow deep uh, yellow ochre cadmium red ultramarine and and a burnt sienna I'm just wondering if I should add black to it I should add black to it why not I like black it's uh, a lamp black it could be any black really I'm not bothered too much about it just put a little bit out there. It's getting a bit stiff now because it's it's quite old. So they're all there. They are all Winton colours. That's Windsor and Newton. Student quality. They they're fine for what I use it for. I'll finish me my mic. Oh no, be bothered all this morning. Now knives, as I explained yesterday, that's a very good knife for covering a, a, a large area a couple of tulip shaped knives and a palette knife there yeah. these are all good quality steel and they cost a bit but Richard Mulgrave I think it's Richard I uh, apologize if I get his name wrong Australian artist he, he paints on a huge scale and his knives are actually great big cranked spatulas for icing cakes uh, and he slaps it on, he pours this, this, well, this was not paint a, a fraction of the painting of his painting that he does. And he's got a trailer on his, on his big four wheel drive with a great frame on the side, which angles out and he puts his great big boards, canvases on and he's got a table with, with all his uh, paints. I reckon he must, he must squeeze out at least a 37 mil tube of everything just to start with but he must be very success, uh, successful to be able to afford that amount of paint anyway i've got my boom 
in a quite I think it's a quite nice position. I've done a horizon. I'm not bad at horizon, but I do tend to go up one side. So we'll uh, there's a lot of white in this, so I'll put out a bit more. What I'll do, I'll mix it with a bit of griffin. This is an alkyd resin fast dryer. And it, it will mix with lots of colours there. Yeah, that'll do. But they're quite expensive. Obviously, 200 mil tube. The, the, the main colours, if you're going to do this, you'll have main colours that you'll use more than anything else. <coughs> Um, but they're your choice. But if mine are, are ultramarine, cadmium yellow, pale, yellow ochre, and white, and because I use so much of those, I buy the largest tubes I can get. Let's just mix those together. Okay, a piece of uh, tissue. There's a messy, messy old business. Excuse me, I've still got a cough. Uh, right. So we will start. Okay, now so I, I, I work from the top, work downwards. If you do it the other way around, or even start here and put the water in, you will end up in a right old mess. Start from the top and work down. So, right, so the sky, well, I'll make up the sky, a very, very pale. Very pale blue, and I'll put some a bit of cloud in. Try to gauge how much you will need, which is nine impossible. Got something on there, not that. I'll oh, come off. I primed this board, or all my boards, with PVA glue, diluted. But not to a no gesso, you want it with some tooth to grip the paint, but you don't want lumps and bumps that you'll get if you're using gesso. Uh, just get it on. You can put some nice lines in afterwards, but just, just cover the board. Sorry about the clatter, I can't help that. Let's see the screws that hold it all together, the hinges are wearing a bit. It's a lovely easel though, it's a very versatile these box easels. Well, this is a Mabeth, so it's Italian made, it's a, I paid a lot for it. I think I was ripped off though. Because you can get them for far less than I paid. It's like a portable studio, really, but pretty weighty. Now, when I get to the bottom, I'm not going to use too too much thick paint. I just want a smattering of it, so that it'd be easier to lay in the. The lovely trees and a lot of variety in the trees on, on, on these. I, I do like this painting. Now that is uh, impression, isn't it? Let's have a closer look. The variety that I managed to get in those trees it really pleases me no end. I can, I can tell you. I'm not giving up watercolours. No, 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 no. But this is my favourite way of painting. But if you've done a nice watercolour, then you think, well, that's my best one as well. My favourite way of painting. Let's just get that all off. Then we'll go in and mix some cloudy sort of colour and a bit of, bit of light in the sky. I'll have to look up a bit more there.
I'm listening to RBC this morning. We've got Jacob Reese Mogg on in a minute. This is my favourite radio station. It keeps me company. I don't like music because I tend to paint in time with the music and it all goes wrong. And that's when you start throwing your, your, your toys out of the pram. All right, let's just... Okay, not a too thin. That got the background showing through. Right. Tissue, clean the uh, brush, brush, knife. Now a bit of clouds, bit of bit of blue, bit of red, and then we'll bung in a lump of white. Just going across the sky. Uh, a bit of bit of that contrast in that bit. So underlit, so shadows on the top. Okay. Now, a bit of uh, ochre. Because there's a faint hint of. Can you see that? I thought, is this overexposed? It is, isn't it? You know what? Because I put loads of white on and the camera was set up. Alright, so I'll use the brightness a bit. Try that. Because I've set the camera to the, to the board, but once you start putting light colours on, uh, it's still not quite right, but too much exposure there. Some ways of fine, it's a bit. Well, we'll see how we go. Uh, mix the blend in a little bit of, bit of this, uh, I think I'll have to print some of this, otherwise it'll just look a bit bitty. I don't want to be too literal with this. Now, you want to carry the uh, your light clouds right across off the off the page, so to speak. Right, okay. Let's put a bit of cloud in there. Just a bit of a bit of variety. Leave still leaving the tree areas. <sighs> okay, well, that that's that'll do. Well, at the end, uh, well, I'll, I put um, photographs of the paintings on Facebook afterwards on my Facebook. So if you want to see the more accurate colour, you, it will be. Well, that's that's not bad. That's quite good. That's quite good. Uh, right, more paper. Right, now we're going to do some 
uh, some trees now. Now, first of all, we'll, we'll put the background trees in. I'll just take a bit more bit of that out. I want to put the, some some blue, but I want uh, just be a bit of try a bit of bit of uh, ochre with that. But I want them light, so let's mix in some of this light stuff in here. Don't waste paint. I want you on the blue side to give the impression of distance. So let's uh, Right. Okay. Now we'll put in some some darker. Now my darks. I'm going to use black and Cajelo. It's just a beautiful, such a beautiful green, and a bit of sienna over there. So we can have some more yellow in there. Now I've got just my horizon there. I drew it in. I, I used to be a draftsman in a previous life. My head in the way. Oh, it is, isn't it? Okay, sorry. Just my basic colour. I vary the colours. Oh, I don't you wish you were doing this. Be careful when you slide your knife through your tissue. I be assured that after years of use, these knives get a razor edge. And if you're not careful, you slide that way. It will cut through the paper if you're not careful and through your finger. I've done it. Not much fun. And I'm putting it, making sure the, the shadow is keeping my head out of it. But a bit more light. I've probably put too many colours out then. But you need, you don't really want to end up with no paint. A good painting is when you've got a lot of paint left because that means you've used a lot of paint. Or it's what you throw away, is what I'm trying to say. If you throw a lot away, it means you, you've, you haven't been mean with the paint. I'll straighten up the horizon in a minute. Let's just get some darker bits in there. Now I want some light, some nice light in there, light greens.
and I'll put some more, I'll, I'll mix a bit of yellow with some burnt sienna. This is a lovely mix with watercolour. Bit of autumn colours. Bit of green in there. So you do get a lot of green on autumn trees. Most of the actual, the, most of the colours is on the ground. Now I've never done this one in, uh, in with a knife. I've, in fact, it's leaving out buildings is when they cry out for buildings. Get on the green. And we're getting this dark, darkish bluish green. There's a bit of black, a bit of blue. For some reason it's, it's effective in the watercolour, so I'm going to use it here. This is in where the island sort of comes down. But I won't finish that now. I want to put the water in before I do that. Put a bit more green in here. Oh, the head's in the way. So it's keeping these covered as well, wear shorts like I am. Let's get a light, light green, a bit of white in there. Right, we'll go. We'll uh, go back to that. Okay, so let's put in some some water now. Uh, I'm not going to put reflections in or anything. I, I'll, I'll change the tones, but uh, I don't want to make it too difficult for myself. So we'll have to do a very thin sky grey. I don't want the uh, horizon to be razor sharp. Let's just put a little bit of light in there. Soften it. Oh, excuse me. Sniffing away.
put some of those those light clouds shining when you finish your painting session and you don't want to throw your paint away cover it with shrink wrap or scrape it off put it on a on a like a piece of plastic put it in the fridge cover it up though otherwise you'll invoke a lot of invective from your significant others now I'll, I want to put in a bit of uh, stuff in this corner so I'll just reduce some of that and bring that in. bit of ochre because I'll show you what I'm, how far I've gone, look nobody's ever painted this before somebody accused me a while ago of of copying Stephen Cronin can you believe it? I'll stop them from uh, commenting I thought, what a cheek that was on the watercolours of course I've been painting with a, with a hake for 30 odd years now I'm just putting a bit of a background of, of water which I can so superimpose over to this marshy sort of or this lakeside common side So a bit of, bit of white, bit of ochre. Right now we're going to put in some land. So a bit of black, a bit of, a bit of ochre. Oops, the picture's turned off, I just have to liven up a bit. Mm. 
point. Let's just get a bit of lighter. I've mentioned it before, but one of my old customers, uh, I fitted carpets in the West End for many, many years. And I saw a lot of, a lot of paintings. Just get that in. And I worked for a very elderly gentleman who's an art dealer. I can't name names, of course. He's not alive now, but uh, mm -hmm. but um, we used to go around his house, his, his six-story house. with a glass of sherry when I finished what work I was doing and he had a painting above his uh, mantelpiece and he asked me what I thought of it and he said you didn't ask mine well of course I didn't know I have seen it before it was a beautiful landscape about 30 inches by 24 something like that beautiful French impressionist and he said it was done with a knife Beautiful, but incredible the, the, the detail in it, which is beyond anything I could ever aspire to. And it was by Coro. Coro. Now we do a pebbly bit of stuff here. Right, uh, now we'll do a bit of stuff in here. So we want dark because we're in the corner here. Oh, we'll just let's get that this in. I can build up the colour on that. I put it out because it's, it's such a lovely yellow. Uh, be careful here because I want to put in a little bit of water in there. Somebody asked me if you can scrape out with a card. Yes, you can, but it looks, it doesn't look very nice, but you can try, try it, by all means, find out for yourself. Some brights in there. We're getting to the short strokes now. So let's put in a bit of a bit of watery stuff in. I could do this if 
for hours. Just a little bit of reflection. Hopefully that will show above the uh, the frame. All right, well that, that's that. Now we've got a bit of a tree coming up here. So we'll give that a nice autumn leaf colour. Well, it's there. Do I need to put it in, really? Uh, I don't know. I have a good mind to leave it out. I think I'll leave it out because I could ruin the whole picture by being a bit too ambitious. Let's just uh, just a little bit of scraping. Maybe we could just put a little bit of a bush there, but I'll put some brighter green in there. I'm going to put that in a frame now, back in the old frame that's going to be a bit dirty. Just pull it off carefully. And then I'll get it uploaded to YouTube. Have a little break and then come back and do another one. Carefully does it. Right, talk among yourselves folks for a minute. Well I'll put in a couple of I'm clicking it right here. Okay. Oops. Massive wires on the floor. Hair dryer and all that sort of stuff. Oh, that's not going to fit. Um, oh well. To wait for that to dry up now. Or I can trim it down. Should have checked first, shouldn't I? Anyway, let's, uh, let's put it on the on your stand. No, it's falling out. So there's a lesson. Always check that your your board fits your frame. Right, now what I'm going to do is move my tripod around. There you go. And I'll just wind, wind you up. So there we are. Another little knife painting. Bits of, a bit of a connection to do there, I think. Darker there. Okay, so another little little painting. Not as dramatic as the Norfolk one. I might do another Norfolk one. But I have to go and cut some boards and prime them and get them ready. And see you know oh, well, the next one will be for Patreon. I can't. Ignore me, Patreons. 
thanks for watching guys goodbye